Hello everyone, this is Akio Matsuka from The Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. Today I'm going to show you bead and bright setting ring in Rhino. Let's get started. I'm starting in the front viewport, drew a circle 16.51 mm diameter for size 6. Then on the right viewport, I have this cross section. I will move it from the top, snap to the bottom quad point of the circle. So this is like a comfort fit. Then surface tool, sweep one rail, select the rail, select cross section curve, enter, move the curve seam to the middle of the ring, and enter, and OK. Now I will need the curve running in the middle of the ring surface. So go to the project command and get the flyout. Find this extract isocurve command. Select the surface. I need to find the middle of this surface. So I will rotate the ring and snap the midpoint of this cross section on the bottom of the ring. Then enter. I have the stone with the cutter and prongs. Uh, which is grouped. I will draw a cross section for the setting cavity. So let me turn off the prong and cutter layer and maybe ring layer. I am drawing a line from the girdle. From the girdle to the wall, it needs to have 0.2 millimeter space. And then the girdle should be 0.2 millimeter above the surface. So I will create a line from the girdle. Turn on the project and click the girdle. Then 0.2 millimeter for the spacing. Draw a line to Y direction and rotate about 15 degrees. The wall should be slanted a little bit. Then join those curves and mirror to the other side of the y-axis and close this curve. Here we go. So this is a cross section. Now I will need a curb to erase the stones. I will use a float on curb to place the stones on the top of the ring. So I will need a, a curb which is the same length to this circle. Line command. L enter for the length. Select a curb to measure. So I will click this circle. Enter, hold on shift. So this creates a line which is exactly the same length to this circle. Now I will move this the set of the stone to the middle of the line. Then I turn on the prongs. I will need a 15 stone which will be set on the top of the ring. This is going to be in the middle, so I need a 7 stone on the either side. I turn on the cutter because cutter has a reference line. So reading array, number of items, 7, enter, first reference point and second reference point. So that will give you 0.2 millimeter in between the girdle. Okay, then again, reading array, select the object array, enter, number of the item again, 7, and from here to over here. Good. Then we're missing the plong at the last set. So I will ungroup it, uh, copy. Then this cross section. So I will move the cross section to the end. And we align to the plong, 
and um, this cross section is the end of the setting cavity, so we need a 0.2 millimeter space, so minus 0.2. And the same thing the other side. I'll grab it. Then this time it's a point two. We need to ungroup stone and prongs before we flow. So select all the objects and ungroup. Then go to flow along curve command, select the object flow, uh, I have a record history on, enter, rigid has to be yes because we don't want cutter and gems to be deformed on the surface, and stretch has to be yes. Base curve, select this end of the curve, and target curve. Then go to the front viewport. Now I will turn off the prong layer and probably um, ring layer. When you look at between the stone carefully, you see that uh, this curve is overlapping. And let me measure the distance between. Now it's at 0.80 millimeter. Since we flow with the record history, what we can do to correct this is we can scale 1D this base curve. So you can click the scale handle and type 0.99 for the 1% smaller, and it becomes 0.20 millimeter, which is perfect. I will turn on the prongs. Then I will hide stone and prongs on a base curve. Now making a setting cavity with sweep one rail. Sweep one rail, select the rail, so click the top portion of the circle and select the sweep shape. And you need to cap this. Great. Then Boolean difference, Boolean difference from this ring. So now you have this setting cavity. So now I will turn on the prongs, and then you realize the prong is a little too high for the rendering purpose of this. I have this prong, which is shorter than this manufacturing prongs. I will get the fly out of the block. And here is a replace blocks. So select block instance for changes, and that's going to be all the plongs except this the shorter one. And press enter. Additional hidden instance no, so enter to accept. And select the instance to using it for the replacement is this one. And you see what happened when I click this short plongs. See, all the plong are shortened now. So now I will turn off the plong and gem and turn on the cutter. Do Boolean difference, but these are the block instance, so we need to change it to poly surface. Actually, I will turn on the everything, and here is an explode block and explode all the blocks. These are poly surface. So now I will Boolean union those two pavilion cutter and hole cutter. And I'll right click the cutter layer. Then Boolean difference. Now I will union the plongs to the ring, and here we go. The ring is ready. 
Now I go to the rendering panel, change the viewport mode to the rendered. Okay, so uh, here I have something set it up already. The 360 degrees environment is the Jam Studio. Uh, this came with the Rhino 7. Ground plane, we need a ground plane. And this ground plane material, uh, make sure it's on. And I have this a little bit reflective material, light gray. And use the custom setting to use a LDJ window. Use a skylight and also select the LDJ window. Go to the material. I have this 18 karat polish. So select the ring and right click to apply. And the stones, I go to um, layer and right click and then select uh, all the stones and go back to materials. Right click and assign the object. Okay, then change it to the ray trace. I hope you liked today's content. Let us know how you like our modeling projects. Leave us a comment Thank at the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video.